Sponsored by Bangta, Sustainable Business Development in Harmony with the Environment and Society. Nowadays, positive developments in Myanmar are in the news at least once a week. And the Danish embassy in Thailand wants to support this positive development in Myanmar by setting a diplomatic mission in Yangon. We interviewed the key figure in this process, the Danish ambassador to Thailand, Mikhail Hemniti Winther. He explained what the diplomatic mission can do to bolster the development in the fast-changing economy and how it will help Danish companies to make business in Myanmar. Although the Danish embassy supported development projects in Myanmar from Thailand many years already, the embassy now sees it is time to go inside the country and support reforms right at the heart of where things are happening. As I said, we have had diplomatic relationship for a long time with Myanmar, but for sure the reforms, the democratic reforms and the economic reforms that takes place rapidly and with rapid speed uh, it have been a determining factor for us to wish to engage more because we can more effectively work now. So um, what is the main reason to set up a diplomatic mission in Myanmar for the Danish embassy? It's really an initiative that the Danish government is taking as part of our increased engagement in Myanmar. It's a sign that we want to support these reforms that take place with a very rapid speed. We both want to be part of supporting the Myanmar people. We also want to be close to where things are happening and we want to most of all facilitate the development cooperation that we are providing to the Myanmar people. And um, so what task is that mission going to do? The diplomatic mission will be like an embassy branch of our embassy here in Bangkok. Most of all, it will have the task to administer our development cooperation or development aid, as you could call it. So we'll post a Danish counselor who right now is working at the embassy with all the development cooperation with Myanmar, and he will move physically to Yangon, where he will take up the job as chargé d'affaires, as we say in French, but actually means in charge of the embassy office. And there he will, together with some staff, uh, work with the development cooperation. And the f interesting thing about our office there is that it is opened and will be opened together with Norway, and therefore it is part of a Nordic countries cooperate. The European Union, which Denmark is a part of, has recently lifted sanctions on Myanmar. Now the Danish ambassador seeks to become a facilitator for companies to come into Myanmar. He wants to do this with Norway as well. The ambassador sees great investment potential in Myanmar and this every sector. This is because a country that is a large population as well as already naturally interesting. This view is shared by some Thai business leaders who see Myanmar is more attractive regarding expansion when compared to Laos or Cambodia. Besides that, the Ambassador Winther thinks Myanmar also has a lot of appeal because of its new, as interest from Danish companies in particular, here is what he believes. We see increasing interest from many different branches. Many are interested because, as I said before, the country itself is new. Everything that is new on the stage is always interesting. It's like a concert, a new name. You want to know what it is. And then because of that obvious potential for making good business. So we have many companies that are curious, who has interest. And then we have some countries that has more than interest. We have many Danish companies who are very used to challenging environment, who have been in the most difficult countries in the world and who are not scared by those challenges that are ahead. Many of them are interested in what you also mentioned, the political, not necessarily stability, but more predictability. Mm -hmm. What can we expect? Because that is always important for a business person. It's not necessarily what kind of political system you have, but whether you can be sure that the legislation is the same 
next year as it is now. So that is what they are very much interested in. But we do have increasing interest from Danish companies to Myanmar. Do you actually think that the specialty of um, Danish companies, that they are more used to difficult environments? I think both yes and no. Denmark is a small country. We are only five and a half million people. Many of our industries, many of our companies are not large ones. They are actually medium and small. Many of these medium and small companies are not used to uh, very exotic markets. Many of them are exporting to neighbor countries, to the US and Japan. We also have several big companies uh, in Denmark that are very much aware and very much used to far away markets and very, very challenging business environments. And we have some that actually are specialized in exactly those kind of markets, although they may not be very large companies. Because Denmark is a country with very few resources of a natural kind. We only have our people, our education, and our innovative uh, brains, which I think we have. And we use that as a strength. So many of these companies are depending, because our home market is so small, we need to go out in the world and invest and trade with countries in the world. So I could say that because of our size and because of our openness and our wish to compete, I think we have lots of companies who are quite ready, but we also have a large number of companies that are not ready or willing to, to come to Myanmar. <laughs> The diplomatic mission in Myanmar will be supported by the embassy in Thailand. The new base will make use of knowledge gathered in the past between Thailand and Myanmar. A big part of the task is helping Danish businesses to invest in Myanmar. The Danish embassies around the world are a bit unique compared to many other countries' embassies because one of our, of our focused and central services is to assist Danish companies in promoting their business. And we actually are charging, most of our services are charged in, in uh, the companies have to pay for our services. That is to ensure that we don't compete with private companies that do the same thing since we are a government entity, but also to make our services uh, required. If, if companies want to pay for the services, it's because they value what we're doing and they consider it professional. So in my view, but I also have to say that since I'm the Danish ambassador, our services are very professional and we benefit from both having quite a great knowledge of the markets and the countries we are in. And then of course, we also have the, our official uh, title, me as an ambassador, my colleagues as diplomats. So we have access to both government structures organizations and businesses that may be harder for, for companies themselves to have. So our services are to assist companies, Danish companies, in their ways of penetrating to sometimes complicated. Myanmar's economy is believed to take off after two years of stagnation. The ADB projects a 6% growth in GDP this year and even a 6.3% growth rate for the year 2013. Although there's very little that keeps Danish companies from coming to Myanmar in terms of legal preconditions, the Danish ambassador points out that there are still some things that they have to watch out for. There's also been some other things that prevented Danish companies for go, going to Myanmar, and that is what we call the reputation risk. Before, when you had human rights abuses and you had a government that was not well recognized in the international community, many Danish companies, also other European companies, although it may have been legally for them to invest in the country, they may not have wanted to because it could taint the image of the country if they were dealing with companies in a country that did not have a good human rights recourse. So, but the legal security right now and uh, state certainty of the law and political stability would be um, okay right now. So the, c the companies could 
invest right now in practice or is that going to take time too? For any country that is under development and has been isolated for a long time, legislation needs to come in place. It's not going to come in one week. Companies will have, like they do in all countries where legislation may not be so strong or not so transparent, they will have to be careful. It's not only in Myanmar, it's in any country. And that comes also in, in countries like Europe, even in Denmark, before investors take a decision to go to Denmark, they would have to understand the local legislation. Now, in some countries, it's easier than in other countries. And I think it's safe to say that Myanmar probably is not an easy country to invest in now. But the legislation is on its way, and companies need to, of course, put themselves into the business of knowing what the legislation is. The Danish embassy here in Bangkok is here exactly also for that. And this doubt is probably still justified as Myanmar's freedom score in 2012 still lag behind a lot of countries in the Asia-Pacific as it was ranked the 40th out of 41 positions. And after the break, we'll also learn more about Myanmar, about the development of the Danish embassy, which provides for Myanmar as well as the importance of migrant workers for Thai economy. And finally, if Myanmar is really prepared for the AEC in 2015.